Directly from your heart to his fangs, we have a two-for-one review today. Dracula's Feast is freshly delivered to your local game shops and blood banks, courtesy of Jellybean Games. This lightweight party deduction game from designer Peter Hayward will have you dancing the night away with Drac and his other monster buddies at a party of their own. Along with our provided review copy of that comes the soon-to-be kickstarted standalone expansion, Night of the Mummy, bringing all new monsters and abilities under wraps. Past our fellow Widow's Peaked pal on the cover, we'll find the same art on the game's rulebook cover. These 15 pages may seem like a lot, but the vast majority of those are just clarifying and re-clarifying the character's powers and providing lots of full-color examples of gameplay. The nice thing about a book like this is that you, if you ever have any questions about how exactly an interaction works, you're guaranteed to find an answer inside. Past our friend, we have the Space Hogging Insert for providing a small channel for the game's guest cards, accusation cards, and whisper cards. There are also eight of these double-sided reference cards, which will absolutely come in handy for your first few games. After that, you'll really have a good grasp enough of these mechanics to leave them right here in the box. Let's set up a game quickly, and I'll teach you how it works. Our five-player game here has, in attendance tonight, Dracula, who must always attend. He's kind of a big deal, and parties don't really happen without him. The Ghost, Dr. Jekyll, the Trickster, the Boogie Monster, yes, really, and the Swamp Creature. Drac himself is set aside, and the rest are shuffled, and one mystery guest is placed face down in the center of the table. Add the man himself back in, and deal out one to each player. This is your identity for the game. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. On your turn, you will either offer someone a dance, inquire about someone else's identity, or j'accuse. Technically, the rulebook just says accuse, but come on, why just accuse when you can... J'accuse. Trademark pending. Dancing is easy. Pick another player and offer them a dance. If they accept, you will trade identity cards and look at them. Now you know who each other really are. If they decline, consent is sexy, you then must inquire about someone else. Now, inquiring means that you'll ask someone point blank if they're someone specific. They must respond honestly, unless they have to lie. More on that in a minute. By passing you one of their whisper cards. A simple yes or no will do. Finally, you can j'accuse. This is how you win the game, so pay attention. It's also the most complicated action. In order to j'accuse, you must first reveal your own identity. Flip your card face up so that everyone can see it. And then you will gather all the cards from the center. Keep in mind that one of them matches the mystery guest in the middle, so you're going to have one extra. You will then place the accusation card of each guest in front of who you think they are. But do this carefully. Once you place a card, you can't take it back. When all the cards have been placed in front of who you believe everyone to be, Everyone hands a whisper card to the center of the table. You'll pick them all up and shuffle them so that you don't know whose is whose, and you alone will look at all of them. If they all say yes, you win. Good job. If at least one of them says no, you'll tell everyone how you've dishonored your family, and without revealing just how wrong you were, everyone tosses all their whisper cards back into the center in a pile, and you will divide them back out so that everyone has a yes and a no. Play continues, only now you've outed yourself. You can still accuse again on your turn, but odds are it's not going to come back around to you again. According to the box, games take between 10 and 15 minutes, and that's pretty accurate from our tests. The key here is that you need to be both extravagant and judicious with your dancing. It's the only way to be 100% sure about who someone is. Inquiring isn't guaranteed to work. The trickster friend, for example, always answers yes to inquiries. However, dancing will obviously reveal who exactly they are. However, if everyone asks the same player to dance, then that player has all the information they need. It's a light party game, but you do need to be paying attention. In an eight-player game, you'll need to keep seven other identities in your head at all times. No small feat. Does it work? It does, with that previous caveat that it's not a game that you can only halfway play. 
each character has a unique ability that you'll want to keep in your head as well. So depending on your group and just what exactly it is they're drinking, this may or may not be a positive. The art style is delightful, as you can tell, and there's just enough to the character abilities to make them feel fun without being too brain burny. There are three advanced guests that aren't really that advanced, but shouldn't be in your very first game. Overall, Dracula's Feast feels like a great light version of your usual social deduction fare, and something that you should absolutely look into if monsters, and also memorizing, are your thing. The standalone expansion Night of the Mummy is new as well, bringing ten new guests to your spooky party, mostly hanging on to an Egyptian theme. The mummy herself, like Dracula, cannot be the mystery guest, but her friends like the statue of Anubis, sarcophagus, and even the picture of Dorian Gray bring a new twist to our party, face-hiding. Unlike face-hugging, which brings about all sorts of catastrophic tummy troubles, face-hiding means that dancing takes on a new flair. When someone asks another player to dance, everyone closes their eyes and only the dancing couple reveal their cards to each other. However, if you're one of the aforementioned characters, along with the Phantom of the Museum or the picture of Dorian Gray, you won't reveal your card. You'll show the backside of it and then probably do something else. The character abilities in Night of the Mummy are slightly more complicated than the original, so you should really start with Dracula's Feast and then move into these. For me, they elongate the game a little bit and add another level of interest, so keep that in mind. Dracula's Feast and the admirable expansion Night of the Mummy both provide decently fun party times for your next game night, while being just light enough to keep coming back to. Let's go through our checklist before I give you my final thoughts. In the box, rulebook clear and non-gender pronouns. The rulebooks are great, providing lots of clear examples of gameplay and outlining exactly how every character works. There are no gendered pronouns describing the players in either book, which is great. Iconography clear. There's no iconography to learn, opting instead for explaining the character abilities longhand on every card. Packaging well done. Not really. Both boxes feel overly large for what's inside. Just a few cards, both oversized and small. It's not terrible, but there's definitely some space issues. On the table. Good representation. Of the ten characters in Dracula's box, four use male pronouns and six use female. Night of the Mummies has three male pronoun using characters, four who use female pronouns, and three non-binary. A mirror, a painting, and a sarcophagus. Component quality. Just okay, but keep in mind this is a card-driven game. The oversized cards feel great, but the minute you bend or crease one of them, it's going to seriously impact future games, so be careful with these. Replay value. Medium to high. The rotating cast of characters keeps things fresh to a point. Fun to lose. Yes, accusing is the only way to win, and in our games we can all feel when it's about time for that to happen. Games play quickly, and you're always going to want to get another one in right away. Even revealing due to a player power or drawback doesn't feel all that bad. It generally gives you some benefit for doing so. Both monster-led boxes are perfectly weighted and timed to bring a quick punch to your larger group. If you're a fan of Dracula's Feast and are looking for more creatures to add to your dance card, then Night of the Mummy won't disappoint. If the newly breaking Kickstarter for Mummy offers you the chance to grab both, you should, if the gameplay is at all interesting to you. The added bonus of a wide cast will give you enough replay value to warrant the investment. If, for some reason, you only have enough plasma for one of them, my edge goes to the original, if only because the face-hiding mechanic of the sequel didn't quite land for me. I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always leave your cards. <laughs>